Happy Monday, everyone. Welcome to my live session where today we are giving back. My team, my gym team and I are giving back to get you back. Now, the live is I'm going to be giving you five of my favorite at-home workout hacks so that you can build muscle at home. I'm not talking, guys, about running around in your living room doing calisthenics and all these hit uh, workouts. That, that, like I always say, that's great for burning body fat, but if that's all you're doing over these months while you're uh, in quarantine, you're gonna be dropping serious muscle mass and serious strength. These hacks are gonna show you how to not only burn calories, but how to build muscle. But first, let's get to the giving back part. So, during the month of May, because look, times are tough for all of us. I get it, right? Even, even uh, Jim Supplement Science uh, is going through uh, tough times uh, with the quarantine, okay? Everybody is feeling uh, the change. So, to give back during this month, I have special pricing on all my gym powders, my pre-gym, my post-gym, and my pro-gym. So, during the month of May at bodybuilding.com, pre-gym, 20 serve, normal price $37.99, $32.99, the 30 serve, $48.99, $38.99, that's a savings of 10 bucks on your 30 serve, your, all your favorite flavors. Pro Gym, let's talk about the Pro Gym. Two pound Pro Gym, normally 35 bucks, $34.99, now under 30 bucks, $29.99, again, through May, guys, so act now. And remember, my products sell out fast, so, if you think they sell out fast normally, with the special pricing, they're gonna go a lot faster. So do not wait. Four pound, four pound, look at this. A savings again of about $10. From $56.98 to $46.99, act now. And the post-gym matrix, normally $37.99, now only $32.99. So this is my way to give back so that you guys have what you need so that you can get back to doing it. And that's what the live is about. My workout hats, hats are gonna be here so that you can get back and not keep losing muscle mass while you're at home. You don't have to, guys. Look, we're talking about resistance training, okay? What is resistance training? It's using weights. It's using some form of resistance to put tension on the muscle, okay? And this is one of the things that you can do. Your own muscle, using opposing muscle groups. And if you go online and watch all the people that are doing my uh, manual resistance training, the one thing they'll tell you is, I really didn't think that this was going to do anything. But oh my God, if you actually work and do it as you're supposed to be, it's harder than doing curls because you can apply more force than what you're able to lift. So it's a great way, and we'll get into that. So I'm going to cover five hacks today, okay? And these are really categories, okay? So hack number one is using common objects as, and I'm gonna say resistance, okay? Because, wait, but I'm getting resistance. It's due to the pull on the band, okay? So we'll call it resistance. So you guys have probably seen my videos and my lives where I teach you how to use things like a backpack. So what I'll usually do is load it up with books, heavy books, my encyclopedia, Muscle and Strength. You could put uh, things like food, cans in there. And then what you want to do is make sure that that weight is secure. So I take extra clothes and put it in there so that the weight isn't shifting around as you're lifting it. So now, look what you have. You've got a, a weight with a handle here, so this could be a kettlebell, or kettlebell swings, concentration curls. You can load it up and do rows, straight arm pullbacks. You could do flies, one arm flies. With this, get creative. Okay, that's just one uh, method. I've already talked about the water jugs here. You could use different sized water jugs to get different ways. Some of them have handles, making it much easier. You guys may have seen me use the bottles. Before, these are about seven pounds, so I can either have seven pound dumbbells here, 
do my lateral raises, do my curls, or I can hold two at a time. Now I'm up to 14 pounds. And I could add a third one if I want to add seven more pounds, getting up to 21. So that's another option. Your reusable grocery bags is another great option here. You could do lateral raises, curls, rows, what have you. Be creative, guys, right? Look what's around, figure out how you can lift it, and what muscle groups you can target. Now, bands are the easiest thing to use because of the linear variable resistance. The nice thing about bands is that it's different than free weight. With the free weight, this weight stays the same through the entire range of motion, right? So the resistance is the same. However, with a band, the further I pull it, the harder it gets to continue pulling. So as I go through the range of motion, say like a curl, where this weight is the same here as it is here, with a curl, it gets harder the further I lift it, which is recruiting more muscle fibers, particularly those fast twitch muscle fibers, and it makes it hard to cheat. So you'll feel the band a lot differently. Now, obviously it's hard finding at-home equipment, particularly bands. My bands are sold out, should be back in stock any day now. Obviously getting things back in stock has had other issues with shipping and whatnot. So bear with me there. But I've shown you guys this little thing. These are not ideal, the bungee cords, and you're gonna have to find the right type that give enough resistance. But it's the same concept as bands. It's linear variable resistance. They don't have as much range of motion, obviously. So what you can do is combine bungee cords if you need to make a longer uh, a range of motion here. Um, but find what works. Again, it's just being creative and realizing that you're trying to create some form of resistance to the muscle. And like I said, the other thing that you can use is nothing but your own body. So, with curls here, look at that. Doing a curl, I'm using my right triceps to resist the biceps from performing that curl. So, I could put as much resistance as my triceps can provide, meaning I'm probably recruiting more muscle fibers than when I'm normally doing a barbell curl in the gym, as long as I'm applying enough force in that biceps. And so what this really is, is it's more like an isometric where you just hold it, but you're slowly taking it through the range of motion. And so what I recommend doing is, take these glasses, I'm sweating so much, uh, they're sliding all over the place, is I do it as a count of five. So you want to do the super slow. So with the biceps, so you can try different uh, arm positions. Remember, bringing the arm up is going to put slack on that long head. So it's going to focus more on the short head. Bringing the arm back more is going to help put more on the long head. And also turning the arm in this way is going to hit more of the long head. So you can try different uh, positions for the arm to do your curls. But like I said, what you want to do is resist it for a count of five. One, two, three, four, five. And resist it on the way back down. And then if you're following along on my at-home workouts at gymstapani.com here. Oh, I clicked off. Give me a second here. If you go to gymstapani.com, you go to the article section, you can find workouts, free workouts that I have that use all these techniques and show you how to build a workout that's going to build muscle with these very easy implements that you can find around the home, let's see here. So if you go down to my article section down here, you will find here's my at-home arm workout. You can actually see me doing The manual resistance here. So this will show you the whole workout. This is a whole arm workout. Free at gymstapani.com. 
Sorry, it's a little hot in here. We've got the AC off, so I am uh, pouring, pouring buckets today. So go here, and you'll find, we'll talk about this in a minute. So those are your common objects, whether, like I said, we've got water jugs, we've got a backpack, or we're using our own uh, body weight as resistance. Now, hack number two is kind of similar, but a little different. This is using structures around the home. By structures, I mean things that will allow us to do body weight style exercises, but make the exercise either harder uh, or easier. So, for example, a chair, right? Okay, if you want to do dips, Normally in the gym, you get on a bench, right? You do your tricep dips here. You're just going to use the chair. And again, you can either make this harder by putting your feet up on another structure or putting your feet on the, on the ground. And then you're simply going to do your tricep dips. And it doesn't have to be this style of chair. It could be a, a uh, cushion chair with the arms, as long as you have uh, a solid structure uh, on the arms there. And then, I actually have a ladder, not because we're setting anything up here, but if you guys have a ladder at home, this makes a great leg workout, okay? Or cardio, okay? Running in place, doing jumping jacks, or trying to run in your home, you don't have much space, right? Go vertical, guys. Vertical, look at this. Now, I'm just recovering from uh, leg surgery on this to repair this quadricep reattach, or I'm four on this leg, so I can't really do this as fast or as properly as I should, but you'll get the point. You're simply gonna climb the ladder as fast as you can, again, my legs, I'm, I can barely do this, as high as you can, and then you're simply gonna come back down, and then back up, okay? You can either do sprints of this, like 30 seconds, or try like a Tabata style, where you do 20 seconds on, Going up and down, 10 seconds off, 20 seconds on. You put this in your garage or put it outside and uh, you've got a little cardio station or a leg station with the backpack. Remember, not only can you use this to hold onto, but you can actually wear this. For extra body weight to add to your legs and make this even harder, okay? So that's one or two uh, structures, we'll call them. And then let's head over uh, to the table. And you guys have seen me do inverted rows. Again, you go to juiceandpine.com and you pull up the how to train back at home with no equipment. You'll see not only these techniques being used in the workout, but you'll see how to use them so that you can get a complete workout for that target muscle. Now, for that, what we want to do is we want to be under the table to do an inverted row. So we're simply going to, and this is going to vary depending on your table, right? This one, the legs come together, so i got to kind of come through the legs here. And then what I'll do is I'll hold on right out here. And then we're going to keep our body straight, and then use those lats to pull us up and back down. And then you can change arm position going closer. But again, as you come here on the top of the table, it gets a bit harder versus here at the sides. So that's how to do your inverted rub. Now, for biceps, We're going to come sideways on the table here. And instead of going feet first, we're actually going to go head first this way because we want the resistance here uh, to on the bicep. So what I'm going to do is come in here. And now what you're going to focus on doing is not pulling like a row, OK? So don't try to pull yourself up like you were doing in the rows, but you want to focus on sort of lifting your head towards the table, 
and that'll be more of an angular pull on the biceps, and you'll be using more of the biceps versus the lats. And then you can change your arm position going closer. It's going to hit more of that long head. And going wider on your curls, it's going to hit more of that inner head or the short head. So, with the table, you've got back rows, you've got the curls for biceps. Let's go over here now. This is our sort of sitting area, but if you imagine that this is your couch set up at home, you've got a coffee table here now. Obviously, this is not your average coffee, this is a rogue uh, steel coffee table, but even if this was a wooden coffee table, obviously, maybe put something on it to protect the wood, but you have a step up here, right? There's your step. Train legs, you add that backpack. For weight, what is a step up, guys? You think you can't train at home because you don't have enough weight? A step up is a one legged squat, meaning you only need half of what you can normally squat to get a good workout. So you can use considerably lighter weight with the step ups, get a great leg workout. And like I said, if you go to gymsapani.com, go to the article section, find the at home equipment free leg workout. I'll show you how to use some techniques, which we're going to talk about in a minute, to make this even harder for your legs. Then you've got the couch uh, as well. I've shown you dips. You can use the couch for dips. And then for push-ups, if you find that push-ups on the floor are too hard for you to do, if you're doing power push-ups, particularly where you don't have enough force to explode off the ground, putting your arms up reduces the resistance that your body is going to provide. Now, it's easier to do either explosive push-ups or even regular push-ups. So, all this is equipment, guys, that's in your home that you can be using to build muscle as well as burn calories. Now, how do you do pull-ups, right? The problem with training at home is particularly pulling exercises like back, right? And I was showing you how to do inverted rows with the table. But what about pull-ups or pull-downs? It's really difficult at home to find a way to have resistance going against gravity, right? What can you pull down when you have to pull yourself up? So we'll use a pull-up, but you don't need a pull-up bar. All you need is a door. Now, I recommend not stressing out your hinges by using a door stopper, and I'm going to wedge this in with a hammer. So now that will not only support the hinges so that you don't put stress on and rip your door off, don't piss off your landlord, uh, it will also keep the door in place so that you're not swinging while you're trying to do your pull-ups. And then you're simply going to grab onto the top of the door, guys. and do your pull-ups. Now the nice thing here is if you suck at pull-ups, you can kind of use the door to assist you to get up to get up there. So, or you can put a, steer, a chair here to step on, put yourself, you can't do any pull-ups, and then do the negatives. But again, these are very easy uh, ways to get a workout in your home that most people overlook. There, there's ways to work out everywhere. So, Technique number two we covered, using those structures. Let's go to technique number three. Let's, I'll just make this DIY. Do it yourself. Make your own equipment. Now, in a recent live, I did, I actually showed you guys how to build your own pulley system. 
And if you go to my Facebook, go to the playlist, you can find the video on these at-home tips where I actually show you the equipment you need to make a pulley system. And so what I have here are two pulleys, which means I could use these as a cable crossover. I could also use these as single pulleys, trices press down. I could sit down or kneel down and do pull downs here. Now what you want to do here is, what I have here is a, one of these, this is from Rogue, it's a, a little hub here that holds the way, it's a pin. And then what I do is I take a carabiner, I have a, uh, this little uh, sort of uh, circle, uh, what do you want to call this for the, for the cable here, to create that loop there and then these cable clamps. So this is about a quarter to three eighths inch uh, plastic coated cable, you want to make sure it's thick enough depending on how much weight uh, you're pulling, okay? You want to make sure that it pulls away. But then I have these pulleys here, and these are not ideal, okay? Uh, I sort of just made this on the fly one day for the live, but you really want, you want to try to get a bigger pulley, at least a six, maybe an eight inch uh, diameter pulley. The bigger the pulley, the less the resistance, okay? It's going to be a smoother pull. But whatever you can get, I, I use these just to show you. It doesn't really take much. Now what you're going to do here, is you're going to connect it down here with the carabiner and then this allows you to change the weight so you just sort of take this off here take the weight off increase it or decrease it but now the key here is at the top okay so that you can adjust this you want the cable to stop just past the pull okay and then the rest is going to be made from chain and what this allows you to do is it allows you to adjust the length here so that when you're doing pull downs, you're obviously going to catch the cable much higher, the cable handle. But when you're doing, say, cable crossovers, you're going to want them more down here. Okay, so like I said, go to Go to my Facebook page, find my playlist in the videos, and I break this down how to do it. I actually have a diagram of all the equipment that you need so that you can do this. Right in your garage or your basement, uh, the way I have it here, I have the, the uh, eye bolts going through that beam, but if you have just the ceiling, you can get the eye bolts to go in straight up versus the side, and then you've got your own pulley system. You can also, uh, create a low pulley if you want, or even a double pulley to even create less uh, resistance and drag on the pull. But get creative, guys. When I grew up, the way I got into weightlifting is my, my dad, some of you may know, uh, the other Jim Stepani, the older uh, Jim Stepani, but he actually built a gym in our basement. It was all homemade equipment with all these style of pulleys. We had a crossover, pull down. We even had a leg press that was all homemade out of uh, wood, metal, uh, <laughs> and cable. So you can get in a great workout and build your own uh, gym, very, very cheap, and just running to uh, Home Depot. Now, hack number four are intensity techniques. Now, as I mentioned, when you're training at home, you don't have the plates, the 25s, the 45 pound plates that you can just load up and put in a lot of overload. So, we're using light weight, right? Which is why most trainers are at home just having to do this, right? No, guys, you can build muscle, it's just using the right intensity technique. So, have you guys seen me do this video yet? And I did this one in the gym as well with very light dumbbells for when you're traveling in your hotel. Gym only has maybe dumbbells up to 20 or 30 pounds. It's what I call extended set training. So you basically take a muscle group and consider what is the hardest exercise to do for that muscle group. Let's take shoulders, right? What is the hardest shoulder exercise, the one that you use the light, lightest amount of weight on, probably bent over lateral raises, right? This exercise. So 
With extended sets, what you do is you take your weight, your light weight, this is only seven pounds, or I could go up to 14 if I have two in each hand, right? And you start with the hardest exercise first, okay? So you go and you take this exercise to failure. Now, once my delts are dead on the rear belt flies, I can continue doing shoulder exercises, but easier ones. So what would be easier than a bent over lateral raise? Probably a lateral raise, right? You're stronger on lateral raises than you are on bent over lateral raises. So then you just stand up and you move right into lateral raises, right? Then when you hit failure lateral raises, you find the next exercise that is just a little bit easier than lateral raises, something you use a little more weight on. Them. Maybe front raises, right? So then you go into front raises. You hit failure there, then you choose another exercise that is easier to do. Upright rows, because now we're using two, uh, two joints. So we have more than one muscle group assisting the shoulders, right? And so you could use more weight on upright rows. But remember, we've already reached failure on all these other exercises. So now when we get here, the delts are fried. So even though these are only seven pounds, they're gonna feel a lot heavier. Then once I hit failure on the upright rows, I could even go into presses, okay? Now this looks much easier because I'm not really taking each set to failure, but that is the concept of extended set training. So, one technique you could use is extended sets. And again, in my workouts, on bodybuilding.com, you will see these techniques being used in these at-home workouts so that you're getting the proper resistance to fatigue that muscle and to instigate muscle growth, even though you're training at home with very little equipment. Now, another technique is pre-exhaust. So let's take the push-up, for example, right? Most people, and I'll do this just on the chair, most people are, who train in the gym are pretty proficient at push-ups, right? So maybe the push-up is an easy exercise to do. So if you just started your chest workout with push-ups, you're gonna be doing push-ups all day. That's really too many reps, reps to instigate muscle growth. So we could either wear a backpack while we do those, push-ups to make it harder, or we can do an exercise before we do the push-up to exhaust the pecs, which then makes it much harder to do the push-ups, and then when we fatigue on push-ups, it's because the pecs were fatigued. So, you could do, and you'll see this in the chest workout on my website for at home, is you do what I call a leaning fly, which is a one-arm fly, right? So now we're doing a single joint exercise for the chest, we're going to fatigue the pecs with that single joint exercise. Then, when we go over to do our push-ups, those pecs are fatigued. Now the push-ups are no longer as easy as they were when I'm fresh. And now, not only can I not do as many, making it harder and more, uh, more uh, instigated muscle growth versus just tons, tons of reps, but it's also going to better target the pecs because they're going to be fatigued and we know that when we end that set, it's because the pecs are fatigued, not because we fatigue their triceps, leaving the pecs uh, wanting more. No, we fatigue uh, the pecs. So those are two techniques for when you want to make the exercise harder. However, what if you suck at push-ups, right? Some people don't have the upper body strength and can barely do two or three. In this case, we'll use what we call complex training, which the exercise before doesn't make the second exercise harder. It actually, believe it or not, makes it easier to do. This is called complex training. And what complex training does is it primes your nervous system to fire with more force. So, basically what you would do here, let's take chest as an example. What you want to do here is if you're weak on an exercise, say like the push-up, is you want to do an explosive movement first with light weight. So I've only got about probably 30 pounds in here. So what I'm going to do 
And you can do this line flat down too, but I'm just going to do this in a chair uh, to make it much easier. Is I'm going to do uh, five reps of explosive press chest presses here. We're going to press this up as high as I can and get that negative on the way out. Like that. Now, you're only going to take a short rest, maybe 30 to 60 seconds, then you're going to go right into your push ups. And what you're going to find is that those five explosive reps prime that nervous system to really fire with as much force and power as possible when you get over to the push up. So now, Suddenly, you're much stronger because your nervous system, system is firing better. So, those are those intensity techniques to either A, make that next exercise harder if you need more resistance, so extended sets are pretty exhaust to make it harder, and then complex training if you need to make the exercise easier. A good example of that in my shoulder workout is we do the pipe press. Do you know what a pipe press is? Basically, an upside down push-up for shoulders. Very difficult move, but what we do is a complex training where we do in a doorway, we do an isometric hold which fires up that nervous system and then you have more force on this pipe push-up. So use those techniques. Now the fifth and final hack is about getting in your training zone, okay? And you want to do something to create a routine, okay? You need to create a routine if you're working out in the same room that you're watching movies and hanging out with your family, right? Typically, when we train, right, we go to the gym, maybe we're at work or at home, we take our pre-workout, we get in the car, we put in our, our uh, favorite uh, whatever music, heavy metal, uh, whatever it is, maybe it's country, whatever gets you going, okay? And it's different for everyone. But those sort of rituals get you prepped. They get your muscles ready. Your body knows what's going on. As soon as you start drinking that pre, it signifies your body workouts coming. Your body starts getting ready for exercise. Well, when you're at home and all you're doing is going from the kitchen to the living room for your workout, you don't have that ritual, right? And so you find that it's very difficult to get into that mode. And even if you're doing the workouts, you kind of find that you're doing them half-ass, right? Your kids are watching you. Uh, your roommate can hear you grunting and groaning in your bedroom or whatnot, wondering what the hell you're doing, right? It doesn't seem to be as legit as the gym. Bullshit, guys. Bullshit. That's an excuse, okay? I can get a workout in in a freaking closet. If you lock me in a closet for 12 years, I'd come out pretty much looking the same, okay? You can work out anywhere, okay? It's an excuse. So, get that ritual, get out your uh, ear pods so that you can escape from that home environment and get into your workout zone. Maybe it's meditation, okay? Maybe it's listening to, to that heavy uh, metal music to get going. Whatever it is that gets you going, create some type of ritual, I can't tell you what that is, in your home so that when you're training, you're just going from the kitchen to the living room or to the bedroom or the garage or wherever it is, you have some type of ritual that gets you pumped up and fired up to kick ass in the gym. That's your gym now, okay? That is your gym. So stop making that excuse that, A, I can't get in a good workout. Well, I just showed you five hacks that will allow you to get in a good workout anywhere, guys, anywhere. But don't give me this. I'm just going to wait to get back to the gym because if I can't do the perfect workout, there's no point in working out. BS. BS, guys. Keep training so that you don't lose your muscle mass and your strength that when you get back to the gym, you can jump right back in to left off. So use these at-home workout tips, hacks, like I said. Use common objects. I can't tell you what you have lying around the house, so be creative. If it's heavy, figure out how to lift it and what muscle groups you can target with. 
Use the structures around your house. Door frames, doors, tables, couches, chairs, uh, coffee tables, what have you, ladders. Three, make your own equipment if you have to. I've shown you how to do a nice pulley system uh, that will target just about every muscle group uh, that you can think of. And you don't need to attach weights to it. You can attach, uh, get coffee cans or buckets, fill them with water, or concrete, or sand, okay? It doesn't have to be that set up. You just need the cable, the pulley, and the cable, whatever you attach for weight. That could be car, it could be a tire, okay? Use intensity techniques, right? If you want to make an exercise harder, try pre-exhaust or extended sets. That's going to instigate real muscle growth, even with these very light objects. Or you can use complex training to make the exercise easier for ones that are hard to do, particularly certain body weight exercises. And then the fifth hack is create that routine, okay? I can't say it enough. Now is not the time to be willy-nilly with your supplements, okay? Like I said, it's hard to get into that routine and get psyched up for your working out. Now is when a pre-workout, particularly pre-gym, is really gonna come in handy to get you prepped for that workout and get you fired up no matter where you're doing it. And then don't forget about the recovery, guys, particularly now. I've got glutamine in post-gym, which helps keep your immune system firing. Recovery, as well as carbs, is going to help keep that immune system fired. And you may have seen my video on protein, okay? A lot of people think, well, I'm at home, I'm not training as hard, so I probably don't need to be eating as much protein. Bull, bull, okay? Research shows that when you're less active, you need more protein to maintain your muscle and your strength. So make sure you're getting adequate protein. Again, guys, a minimum of one gram per pound of body weight. 200 pounders should be eating 200 grams of protein, if not up to 1.5 grams. And in some cases, with very hard training athletes, two grams per pound of body weight. Get your protein, guys. It'll make all the difference in your training at home with your strength and your muscle mass gains. And with these five apps, yes, it is possible to still build muscle while you're at home. All right, guys. And don't forget, I'm going to move back. through the end of May, let me see if I can find the cursor on my glasses, I'm giving back to get you guys back with the special pricing. And like I said, as I always say, I warned you guys when I launched the great pre-gym, it sold out in two days, okay? So don't let these products sell out and miss this great opportunity that does not come along much uh, with the gym line. Look, guys, these products are very expensive for me to make, okay? So it's hard for me to give discounts uh, and, and, and these sales, okay? Because there's very little margin on these products and ingredients that I put in there. So take advantage now before these savings run out. All right, guys, I want to thank you for tuning in for training with me, and for always being Jim Barbie Strong. I'll see you soon, guys. And again, head to bodybuilding.com before you miss out on your favorite flavors.